Hello again, and welcome to another one of my Adam's Corner videos. I'm Adam Long, the host of the podcast Adam's Corner. I do a Blu-ray show once a month on my podcast where I recap all of the physical media releases from the previous month. And I do these videos to highlight some of the releases so that you can actually see what I'm talking about. On this video, though, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be taking some movies out of my collection, as it were, that you can see behind me. Horror films that really have had a meaningful impact on me over the years that aren't as widely known. And I've got a half a dozen titles here. Uh, some of these are actually kind of hard to stream unless you find them on uh, YouTube or whatever uh, those places are. But officially, it's hard to find a streaming site for some of these titles. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to uh, talk about uh, these six horror films since we are in the season of horror, uh, with it being the month of October and Halloween is fast upon us. So the first one I'm going to talk about is Dead and Buried. This is from 1981. This is a, a, release in, a, a limited edition release that I got a couple of years ago from Blue Underground. Uh, you can see it there. Uh, it's a three-disc edition. Um, nice little booklet there. Uh, it's amazing to have this in 4K. Uh, I can remember when I first saw this film in 1985, uh, I guess it were, or maybe early 86. There was a video store that was not far from my house, and I had a friend who would come over on the weekends. Uh, we went to high school together, and he had seen this on cable and recommended it to me, so uh, we watched it uh, one Friday afternoon after we got out of school. And I'll never forget uh, how amazed I was at the ending of this film. <laughs> this is a film that just has, I love a great twist ending. Uh, Dead and Buried was one of those films that has stuck with me ever since seeing it uh, with my late friend Charles Johnson. I lost him in 2014, but uh, the memory of Dead and Buried and seeing that with my good friend Charles Johnson uh, still remains, even though he's long gone. Uh, this is a film basically about this small town of to Potter's Bluff, and it's um, in New England, and there are this series of grisly murders that are occurring. And James Franciscus is the um, sheriff who's investigating these things. And he realizes that some recently dead people are being spotted uh, alive, very much alive. And he's wondering, you know, how can these people who have been recently murdered be turning up? And there's a reason for all of this. Don't want to say too much about it. Jack Albertson, who was uh, also known, probably best known for... Uh, the TV series Chico and the Man and Willy Wonka and the Ch Chocolate Factory plays an, an undertaker in this uh, film. That it was his last role. He was suffering from colon cancer and died, uh, I think, maybe before the film was released. Uh, anyway, it's a uh, it's written by the uh, co-writers of uh, Alien, Ronald Shusett and uh, Dan O'Bannon, and it just really has some nice twists and turns and. Uh, just don't want to say too much more about it, but Dead and Buried is uh, just a really, really great horror film to uh, to uh, rewatch this Halloween season. And uh, you know, it, it's I'm sure it may be streaming out there, but it's just not as widely known. Uh, another one is uh, Demon Seed is the second one I was going to talk about. This is a Julie Christie, and basically she's alone in a house. Um, her husband is uh, off. I can't remember what what is going on with the. It's been a while since I've seen it. Uh, but anyway, uh, there is an intruder in the house, and it's uh, not the type of intruder that you normally would expect. Uh, it's a computer. Uh, the computer is uh, voiced by Robert Vaughn uh, of the Man from Uncle fame and many other things. And basically, uh, the uh, this supercomputer wants to use her to um, bear its child. It's uh, in the age of AI and uh, artificial intelligence and the technology that we're in now, this is a kind of a scary, uh, it's, it's getting closer to reality than we might like to think. But Demon Seed is a very well-made film directed by Donald Kamel, who uh, didn't make that many films. He committed suicide, unfortunately, in a most uh, uh, grisly way. I'll not get into the details here. But, uh, uh, but anyway, there's a great musical score here by Jerry Fielding. Uh, it's uh, Julie Christie is the woman who is uh, the victim of the computer who wants to use her to imp impregnate her. And uh, anyway, just a really, really uh, great horror thriller, uh, sci-fi. I guess uh, elements of all of those. Uh, Warner Archive put this out a while back. 
Uh, but yeah, Demon Seed, uh, wonderfully shot in the uh, 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio, Panavision. Uh, great film for the horror film season. Uh, for the horror season, rather. Um, this one was released last year. Uh, it's uh, a childhood favorite of mine. And um, it was uh, one of the first, maybe the first docudrama of its type to achieve uh, national acclaim or national success, financial success, if nothing else. The Legend of Boggy Creek, which uh, 1972 is the year. It's about the uh, sightings of this Bigfoot-type creature in Falk, Arkansas, that for years and years and years, uh, this film was uh, thought to be lost, the, the original materials for this film. And it was found, uh, they found a print of this film at the BFI, and they restored it to glorious 4K last year. It was released beautiful uh, transfer uh, as good as you're going to get with this film and it was filmed again in the 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio so to have this in its proper uh, aspect is uh, really great uh, i was thrilled and it was a 5.1 surround sound uh, soundtrack uh, if you have a nice setup you can uh, utilize that really good stuff um, this was a major inspiration for the creators of the blair witch project uh, and um they just, uh, you know, and, and you can see why. I mean, it's, um, you know, it does have some of the 70s elements that you saw in films of that time, but there are some, there's some really effective stuff going on here as well. Uh, I would, uh, if you've not seen the film or you haven't seen it in a long time, uh, I would say uh, this 4K restoration is uh, terrific. And this is a film uh, that is not streaming to my knowledge. So disc is the only way you're going to get it. Uh, see, to be able to see it um, correctly in this uh, nice restoration. So The Legend of Boggy Creek is the next one. Uh, the Entity is a 1982 horror film. I think it was actually shot in 81, but not released until a year later. Uh, this is uh, Barbara Hershey. And um, some nice reversible... Uh, artwork there uh, for the, uh, the original theatrical artwork there you can reverse the sleeve if you choose i think this is actually out of print it's a 20th century fox release originally and of course disney controls the fox library as they do another title i'm getting ready to talk about but this is a a very effective film i thought the, you know there were some people who thought thought that it was a little exploitative when it came out uh, but I think it's a very effective film. It's uh, basically about a woman, or a true story, uh, about uh, this uh, woman, Carla Moran, who was a single mom, doing the best she could uh, under the circumstances, and uh, she is attacked in her bedroom by someone or something. Uh, she uh, is repeatedly raped by this uh, invisible entity uh, of the film's title, and there's some really, really effective sequences in this film. Uh, and it's, it, it also deals with the psychological ordeal of trying to convince people that uh, what's happening to you is real, in spite of the fact that it sounds so uh, fantastical that no one would believe you. Um, it's, uh, there is the Entity Files as an extra on this, including an interview with the parapsychologist Dr. Barry Taff, and there's uh, new interviews with uh, Barbara Hershey and David Libiosa and composer Charles Bernstein on this, and the editor of the film uh, in this out-of-print edition, so just uh, as far as the extras go. Uh, but yeah, this is, uh, I hope this comes back into print because I, uh, I just think it's a very effective horror film that m not enough people are talking about. So The Entity from 1982, or 1983. I think it was filmed in 81, but it was released in 83. I said 82, I was wrong about that, 83 actually. So I remember seeing it on cable. That was my first experience, experience with uh, this film, uh, seeing it on cable in the, um, you know, on HBO back in the day and just really being spooked out by that. Uh, as far as uh, my personal story on The Legend of Boggy Creek, I forgot to tell this. Uh, used to, uh, this film was a huge hit in drive-ins in the early 70s, and uh, by the early 80s, it was running in syndication, and there was a local television station in the Charlotte, North Carolina area, WCCB. I would eventually go on to work for them uh, later on, but uh, as a kid, it was a, an independent station that showed a lot of uh, films that, fell through the cracks or in the, some interesting uh, selections they would make. And this was one of the films that I saw uh, on the 8 o'clock movie. It seems like a Monday night that it was on. First time I saw it, and it uh, was very effective, as I said. Um, so we'll get on to a television film, a horror, a, one, of the, one of the great horror television films, Frankenstein, The True Story from 1973. Now, this is supposedly a... Uh, more faithful rendering of the story of Frankenstein. Uh, 
uh, it takes a lot of liberties with the story, so don't let the title uh, mislead you. But this is a very impressive television film. It uh, has an incredible cast. Uh, Jane Seymour, Agnes Moorhead, uh, James Mason, Michael Sarazen, Leonard Whitting. Uh, it does a pretty good job retelling the story, but like I said, there's some stuff that's been added here for the film, but... Uh, uh, just uh, some incredibly uh, jarring scenes for a, for a very intense stuff for a television film. It's three hours and six minutes. It was spread over two nights into a two a two hour time slots when it originally aired, but uh, on NBC I believe. But uh, Screen Factory uh, put this out a couple of years ago, and um, just uh, with a few extras and uh, yeah, there's uh, interviews and an audio commentary on this, but. Frankenstein, the true story is just, uh, it'll amaze you at uh, this. This should have been, a, this was good enough to be a theatrical film, and maybe it was overseas, I'm not sure. But uh, there are some really uh, good stuff um, you know, going on in this film. And uh, so there is a, you know, just, I, I would recommend uh, seeing Frankenstein, the true story, for a take on the, uh, the Frankenstein story that you may not be familiar with. Uh, if you, this television film deserves to be more widely seen, I would, uh, I would say. And it still holds up. I uh, recently rewatched it, and uh, it does. So last but not least is one of my all-time favorite horror films, and there is a personal story involved with this one. This is uh, The Other. I've talked about this many times on uh, other podcasts, but I keep banging the drum for this one. Uh, Robert Mulligan was hot off of the success of Summer 42 the year prior. He had also directed To Kill a Mockingbird. And um, so he uh, was a pretty well-respected director. The other was a hugely successful best-selling novel in 1971. So it was no surprise they would make a film out of this, uh, the, the novel. Uh, it just unfortunately uh, didn't do very much business when it was released in May of 1972. I saw this film in 1977, in the fall of 77. It was on the CBS uh, Friday night movie. I was spending the night with my grandparents and I never forgot the experience. It's basically about uh, two twin boys, and uh, played by actual twins, Chris and Martin Udvornoki, and they uh, they find themselves at the seri- at the center of a series of ghastly events. It's basically uh, wherever they happen to be, uh, really grisly things start happening, and you don't know if they're connected or how they are connected, and. How they turn out to be connected is uh, really the uh, crux of the film. And to say any more would do it a grave disservice, and I don't want to do that. Uh, Robert Surtees shot this film. In, he was a terrific cameraman and just uh, incredibly well shot. Uh, great score by Jerry Goldsmith on this out-of-print Twilight Time uh, uh, Blu-ray. You could actually hear the score as an isolated uh, track. And uh, it's uh, just one of the most effective horror films uh, that I saw as a kid uh, when I realized what what it was where it was going what it was what what it was doing uh, my grandmother actually had to explain some of uh, what 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 was really going on in the film because I, it quite went over my head at the age of uh, seven but uh, it's one of those films that just keeps giving back more and more and more as you uh, do repeat viewings on it and I am really just um, just incredibly uh, floored by this film. It's amazing that uh, more people haven't seen it. Uh, a good friend of mine, Adam Zanzi, a good online friend, he did it. He actually did. He's a big fan of the film. He actually did a uh, making of video essay. Of, so if you've seen the film and you haven't seen the essay, you can get that on YouTube as well. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Robert Mulligan's um, uh, terrific adaptation of the 1971 best-selling horror novel, um, The Other is certainly one of my... And I had a 35 millimeter print of this film, actually, at one point. And I ran it uh, in a theater that I worked at in the mid-90s. And these were kids that were a good decade younger than me. And I thought they might be jaded and uh, having grown up in a different era, but they all enjoyed it uh, quite a bit. So, uh, you know, so there was that. So anyway, that's my uh, take on six neglected horror films that are available or or have been available on Blu-ray. This was a, the other is a 20th Century Fox title, by the way, controlled by Disney. I'm hoping that they'll relicense it out to somebody. It deserves to be, uh, to get the uh, 4K treatment if possible. So anyway, but this is uh, my uh, take on some of these neglected horror films uh, or lesser known. Uh, Just a few titles that I would suggest for your viewing pleasure uh, during this season of Halloween. And until next time, keep those discs spinning.